We are now live on the Conversations That Matter podcast. I'm your host, John Harris. It is a good day. It is two days before Christmas and one day before the Lord's Day and Christmas Eve. And uh, I just had my first winter hike of the year. I'm doing a challenge uh, that uh, in the mountain range that's close to me, the Catskills, they have a, they call it the 3500 Club. And uh, I've, I've already climbed all the, the peaks over 3500 feet, some of them multiple times. And so you, you go to a dinner and, and that kind of thing. I did that a few years ago. But if you do them all again in the winter, you can go again to the dinner and be recognized for doing the winter. And I just like hiking. So I decided to do it. But boy, am I out of shape <laughs> for hiking. Man, I haven't done it for a while. And I was huffing and puffing and wheezing. And it'll be different by the it's, it's kind of weird because most people it's like summer, right? And then you kind of you, you, you don't do as many outdoor activities. But for me, I think it picks up in the winter at least for the last few years, because I've been doing that. But anyway, um, good day, and hope everyone else is uh, doing well out there, ready for Christmas. We're going to talk about a number of things today. Uh, The main one is this video that's being circulated out there right now. Uh, It's a trailer. It's an extended trailer of a documentary that is going to come out next year called The Real David Platt. And I'm going to play it for you right now, and then we are going to talk about it. So without further ado, further ado, the extended trailer for The Real David Platt. And by the way, therealdavidplatt.com is where you can find this. Platt, and I want to tell you about a new initiative in Radical called Urgent. David Platt, how much time do you have? <laughs> He's a very charismatic guy. If he was running for office the first time you meet him, you feel like you want to vote for him like right away. When David Platt came to the church, I didn't know much about him. Well, at first, I really liked him. I mean, he was so personable. Very good at question deflection. He knows how to get you to respond emotionally to him. He gave Romans 8 word for word, and boy, it was impressive. The first sets of sermons had decent theological meat in them, but now he wouldn't get past a hermeneutics 101 class. Hey, how are you? Hey, David, David Platt, where are you going, David Platt? I think David Platt is weak. I think that David Platt is a coward. He is a false teacher. He is a wolf. Uh, He is a liar. We'd been lied to from the pulpit. We were lied to from David Platt. There's no doubt about it, he's in it for the money. He's a great actor. Blind spots. We all have them. David was teaching essentially CRT. And then I started thinking, am I part of the problem because I'm white? And I kept thinking, well, I must be misunderstanding because a pastor wouldn't say something wrong. Areas of our lives where we're deceived and we don't know it. Critical race theory preached from the pulpit. Critical race theory really kind of caused confusion for me. We have 106 different nations represented in McLean Bible Church. I've been there doing personal security work since 2012. I would take a bullet for anybody in that church, anybody. And you're going to turn around and say, I'm inherently racist. It's difficult for me uh, sometimes not to just torch like all white people because in particularly white evangelicals and Christians. Mike Kelsey has been handpicked apparently by David to become the next lead pastor of McLean Bible Church. When David Platt took over the church, everything became very autocratic. Ministries were destroyed. They got rid of all of them. Nobody could give me assurances about support for the ministry. How is money being spent at this church and why are all these ministries being cut? I was seeing things that bothered me, that concerned me. They were out marching basically alongside Black Lives Matter. I want want to be a part of disciples being made and churches being multiplied all over the place. Laura asked David Platt specifically if the church was affiliated with the Southern Baptist Convention and he never answered the question. That was an easy question. Just imagine leading churches to multiply churches where we live and around the world. Our Constitution says we're not allowed to affiliate outside of being an independent Bible church. They just disregarded Article 1, Section 2. We will not affiliate with any denomination. We've got to make major changes in how we give. The thing about that article is it's immutable. I had written to the Board of Elders about many of these issues never got a response just like everybody else. We have a 20 plus million dollar budget. If we were actually giving the way God is calling us to give, our budget would easily be two, three times that as a church. Just dream of all we can do. 
So Abby wakes me up in the middle of the night and she shows me a screenshot on her phone of McLean Bible Church's Dun and Bradstreet profile, which says that they were doing business as an SBC church. My name is John Leonard. I work for a firm called Finance and Evaluation Experts Incorporated. When we first got involved, we thought that the financial commitment between McLean Bible and the Southern Baptist was approximately $300,000, which is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but... $300,000 was not even a drop in the bucket. It turns out that it was 10 times that, maybe 20 times that. You mean I could have millions of dollars if I just asked for it? Can you explain how they explained why, you know, hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars were just yeah. going from one place to another? <laughs> yeah. Chuck said, there's money flowing in all directions. He was like, it's flowing everywhere. This is the kind of boldness there is. And all right, we're going to make disciples. We're going to multiply churches. So don't we want to be a part of that here? They were effectively using their own parishioner money to expand the Southern Baptist Convention. What if you use that $10,000 now to support a church planner? Through these plantings, the Southern Baptist Convention was able to start pushing in tendrils into the McLean Bible Church's finances, leadership, and policies. The church had been the victim of a hostile takeover by the Southern Baptist Convention. July 4th, 2021, David went up into the pulpit and said, We have explained and have in writing from the SBC, we're not a member of the Southern Baptist Convention. David Platt, we know that's all a lie. I remember when the church sent that letter out to the congregation, seeing it, and thought it was an absolute joke. There's no way that guy wrote it. Uh, it had to be somebody internal from, from McLean that wrote it. Uh, and the discovery that actually turned out to be the case. From David Platt, it would be helpful if you could send a letter to our elders and copy me clarifying that MBC is included in the SBC church database purely for the sake of accounting purposes. It was drafted by David Platt, uh, the bullet points on what to say. I just felt cheated by them because you know, they're lying. David Platt's proxies are running everything now in the church. And it seems like there was some work done to obscure the movement of money being bundled up through the McLean Bible Church to New City Network or any of these other auxiliary organizations. Sometimes coming back into the McLean Bible Church and then being cut back over to the Southern Baptist Conservatives of Virginia. I saw a Speaker's Bureau advertising David Platt. His fees were ten dollars to $20,000. One of the questions I asked was how much is in the budget for Radical? There wasn't anything for the $650,000 donation to Radical founded by David Platt. What that was for, we have no idea. Another one of those line items that just was never transparent to the congregation. How much rent is Radical paying to have offices in our building? There are too many large sums of money being floated through there. They were denying their own members access to the financial records, which reflected those transactions. Raised this issue publicly, they were getting dismissed from the church. What happened to all these members? How were they purged? This happened to tons of people. And I wondered why they're challenging so many others who had been likewise members. These were very solid men of God. And those people I respected a lot, and all of a sudden they'd be gone. I kind of have a long fuse. But when I read this email kicking people out of the church. And it was sent, by the way, after we'd all asked financial questions. David Platt had said there was a small group of people trying to take over the church. Everybody come out, let's have this uh, election. We won an election and then they redid the election. And I went into the church lobby to vote. The girl got on the phone with somebody. They said to us, somehow your account's been made inactive. She comes back and says, you're not a member. I said, excuse me, I've been a member since 1961. I am an active leader. These are longtime members. These are the leaders of Discovering the Word. Teaching first grade boys and girls. The apologetics ministry. Men's discipleship ministry. I volunteered with special needs adults. Preparing for marriage. The praise team. Adoption, foster care. My voice has just been taken away. It was just so vibrant. They destroyed our church. We were threatened from the pulpit. Nobody better stand up or make a motion or talk or do anything. The security guy told us to stay in our seats and not disrupt. At every door into the sanctuary was a county police officer. And it felt like we were in another country under another government. 
I had no idea what SBC was. I didn't know that that meant the end of any control. We tried to have meetings with David Platt. We were denied. I mean, you guys can't even talk to me for five minutes? The founders of this church would be appalled. My parents would be appalled. And my father would be sitting here in this chair instead of me. We had to bring a lawsuit against the church to get answers to the finances. In response to these lawsuits, the church spent over $1 million to prevent document disclosures and the release of financial records. Now I want to non-suit it, which means withdraw it, but have the right to take this information and go public with it. And that will be the victory in this case. It's an effort to speak the truth. Before David Platt is even pastor at McLean Bible Church, he is working behind the scenes to deceive our elder board. Can we trust our leaders anymore? These guys are really afraid to let the truth out. I've prayed so much about it and asked for the truth to come out, but I just can't even imagine what's behind it. There is something bigger at play going on. What are we hiding? Are they cooking the books? And you think, how, how did I miss something so obvious? This is just the beginning of the light being shown upon McLean Bible Church and David Platt. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in your private room Inside shall be proclaimed on the housetops. Outside, this church coordinated a divisive effort to use disinformation that was a lot to take in. Let me say it again. A small group of people inside and outside this church coordinated a divisive effort to use disinformation. I don't even know what you say after that. Uh, I was part of the team that did the First Baptist Naples documentary. And I was, um, I don't know if I've shared this on the podcast before. I was intake for that. I was sitting um, outside where the interviews were being done. And there were people, there were many actually uh, who did not, who had stories, but did, wouldn't be filmed, right? They wouldn't go on camera and they were just crying. So many of them. And I have to tell you, what you just saw is a parallel. And I do wonder how many SBC churches, mega churches, um, and, and SBC, or in the case of McLean, not supposed to be SBC, but kind of, as, as you heard in the trailer, uh, there was a takeover, churches that were targeted by the SBC. I wonder how many of them have similar stories where someone comes in, like a consulting firm or some, you know, SBC plant, or you know, someone comes in with new, new ideas to overhaul the entire ministry of the church and to take the resources from vibrant ministries and to then allocate them towards new things. In this case, SBC stuff, New City Network, uh, NAM, uh, church planning stuff. And um, I mean, this is only an extended trailer. So this is, you may think that this was the this was a documentary or something because it was long. It was like a 10 minute extended trailer, but it's only ex an extended trailer. There is much more and there are internal documents. And yes, I have seen some of them. Um, and, uh, the, the personal emails, well, I, I don't want to say personal, but emails from David Platt, private emails that, um, now are not so private. And, uh, this is all coming to a head and this is bigger, I believe than the first Baptist Naples thing, because I think it, there was still a lot of unanswered questions with that documentary. And I think the people who were involved in that didn't really know what hit them. Uh, they had this pastor come in, Marcus Hayes, who's basically woke. And they, he didn't even fulfill the requirements of their constitution. And you have a contingent in the church that wants to resist this. And they successfully win. I think it was two votes. And uh, then their membership's removed. They're, they're disciplined from the church. The people who are the ringleaders, supposedly, they're called racist. All of this stuff. And, and it's, it's like the same play being run here. But I think the difference is FBC Naples, that was before 2020. This uh, is, well, I think it was before 2020. Now, now I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was, I think end of 2019, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, it wasn't released at that point, but I think that's when that whole situation happened. Anyway, um, this is after 2020 and there's been a few years and people are a little bit more aware, I think of what's going on. And, uh, 
And, and I, I do think this is going to give answers to many of you who may perhaps are even at an SBC church or a mega church that you, you feel might be targeted by the SBC, whatever the circumstance, I think this is going to give you some insight into what might be going on. So um, I would share that around on social media. Uh, you can um, go to therealdavidplatt.com, therealdavidplatt.com, and the extended trailer is there. Share it on Facebook, share it on uh Twitter, X now, uh, share it on Gab, wh whatever social media you have, Rum uh, not Rumble, um, trying to think of the other one I have. I only have like, what, five? Yeah, only five, yeah. So <laughs> how many accounts do you need these days? I even have a true social account, but it seems like Trump's the only active one on there, but uh, maybe he'll share it. Share it on true social and, and get the word out. And um, if you are someone who currently attends McLean Bible Church, then you know, use this as an opportunity to ask honest questions to your leadership. And, and as Christians, they, they should not be adverse to that. It, it, they should be able to provide answers and in humility and um, shepherd. And, and if there's uh, if there's something wrong in what you just heard in the testimony, they should be able to refute it with facts. So um, this is all about truth and, and that's what's going on. So um, yeah, I know people are weighing in on the comments already. Uh, someone just said, this is a shocking situation. I never cared for Platt. And I didn't either, by the way. I had I had a, a, a The Radical, the book, his most popular book in seminary. I had to read it and it was okay. <laughs> like I thought, eh, it's got some points. But I, there was something that didn't sit well with me. Like there was this anti-American dream element to it that I just knew there was something wrong with it. And be, because the effect it was having in classmates was they just hated America now. And they, they resented their parents. And I thought, what's going on with this? And of course, um, I, I've been doing a lot of tracking uh, of David Platt over the years uh, and, you know, not just his T4G talk, which was kind of infamous, but um, I, I remember I found and I talked about this in my first book on social justice, uh, social justice goes to church, a picture of him and Russell Moore with Ron Sider saying this, this is a, a man who influenced them. And Ron Sider is basically Marxist. And I just thought, well, that's interesting. And so uh, there, there's been so many things over time. Someone even just sent me what the other day, uh, I think it was a recent sermon. It was like within the last month from David Platt, where he's still saying woke stuff from the pulpit and trying to guilt people in the church. And, um, it, it's, it's just who he is, but, uh, but, but there's deeper stuff than just the woke stuff going on. There's obviously there's financial, you saw it in the trailer. There's, there's a number of things. There's financial issues. There's, uh, honesty issues. There's the SBC connection and what that's about. Um, there's there, there's all kinds of things. And so, um, yeah, I look forward to that coming out next year uh, and uh, next, it, it'll be in the winter uh, from what I understand. Um, so let's see here. <laughs> Someone says, Jonathan, do you have the 1215 letter from Chat Peterson to the plaintiffs? If not, let me know how to get it to you and I'll send it. See, there's people who already have uh, access to some of this stuff. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure. I have been sent so many different things. Um, and I'm not the only one, but uh, there's a number of people who have been aware of this for around a month and I've been seeing different things and, and reading things. And it is just, it's stunning. It's stunning. And it's, it, I'm so grateful. This is the thing that you didn't have in the Naples situation for those who know about that. In this situation, there was discovery. And so they were able to actually get some of the uh, deposition uh, stuff and 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 uh, get access to emails and that kind of thing. And um, that's going to be big, I think, in the in the documentary. And it's, it'll be interesting to see what McLean Bible Church and David Platt, what they try to do with something like this. I mean, even now, you, you I, I, I could just imagine them kind of freaking out, even though I'm sure they've known about this. Uh, at least the, the, the fact that um, some of these uh, documents are now in the public domain, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they handle that. And, it, and if there's a repentance, right? That's, the, that's always the question. Is there a repentance? Is there any admission of guilt or wrong? Or is it just going to be attack, attack, attack? Find something, try to accuse. I mean, in Naples, they just accused everyone who was against them of racism, right? I don't think that's going to work anymore. I don't think that's going to be the, the play uh, because how can that work now that we've already lived through 2020? Um, they're going to have to answer for it, really. That, that's the bottom line. And there, there's no amount of obfuscating and attacking people and trying to intimidate that's going to work because the truth's going out there. 
All right. Well, um, that's the McLean stuff. And uh, oh, I should say so, someone for nine ninety nine one day said it's about time this clown. I think he's talking about David Platt is finally being fully exposed. May all the wonder of this Christmas season be a blessing to you and your wife in the coming new year. Well, thank you. One day. I don't know. There's a praying mantis on the on the profile. So uh, Merry Christmas to you as well. So anyway, uh, leave your comments and your questions in the chat box and I'll, I'll see if I can get to them. Um, and Scott says, uh, uh, they will say they are divisive. Yeah, I mean, there's always like some kind of way to blame shift, right? There's always a, something you can pull out to, to try to, but I just don't, I, I don't see how it works. I don't see how it can work in this situation exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, you have a church that went from what, 15,000 people, something like that to now, what is it, like 6,000? I mean, I'm sure they've probably, they, they probably have inflated numbers or something, but that's, um, that's from what I understand. It, it's like, it, it's much smaller. It's been like cut in half. So I don't call that success exactly. Um, oh, I was going to mention too, uh, I was going to share, oh, here, here's the website, by the way, where you can get this uh, particular trailer. Um, the real, it's very simple, the real David And I, I just noticed too, that capstone report, I saw this the other day, put out a, um, uh, Let's see. Well, a, a few things, actually. Wow. OK, I didn't even see this one. David Platt erased Lon Solomon at McLean Bible Church. So Lon Solomon's the previous pastor, a uh, very popular pastor in that area. And <clears throat> it just talks about how um, uh, the former elders letter to Platt and the elder board. Let's see. Rumors were swirling that Lon Solomon had sinned. And that was why McLean Bible Church had never invited him to return to preach. Uh, what did Platt do about these rumors? Nothing. So it says that there were, you know, Lon Solomon's um, character was assassinated. David Platt didn't do anything to stop that. It says that um, according to a letter written by Mark Gottlieb, I think Go Gottlieb, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, uncovered by subpoena. If you remember, see, see, this is what I'm talking about. This is uncovered by subpoena. These documents are out there and they're starting to percolate. If you remember, Lon promised to be back and preach occasionally, yet David never invited Lon back to preach. At least three times over the next year, I would bring this up at an elder meeting. David's excuse being he wanted Lon to uh, back to be recognized and that Lon didn't want to be recognized. He wanted to preach as promised. Two years ago, Lon confirmed with me that when I saw him at some event that he has never been invited back to preach, I brought up the fact to the elders, and this is not about what David or Lon wants, it's about what's right and about helping Lon finish well, as he always hoped. David didn't want him back, and the elders did nothing. See, this is news to me. I, I haven't read this, and I didn't know about this, but this stuff is is getting out there. And so this is at uh, Capstone Report, um, <clears throat> and, th and there's much more in it, too. Oh, man. <laughs> they, they have uh, and a never-reported slide from a 2019 elder board meeting. Platt and his cronies wanted to more control over finances. To achieve this, they cited Platt's brand. According to the slide, you can see on this page, leverage David Platt's brand, faithfulness, zeal, character, expertise. Oh, that's just great. That's just great. Um, that reminds me of, uh, well, let's see if I can I can find it. There was an article, um, let's see, SBC Mega Millions. Let me see if it comes up on a search. Um, it's not coming up on a search. There, there was an article though that I had read uh, a few weeks ago, but it wasn't a few weeks old. It wasn't new. It was actually, I think a few years old, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe it's Nam Mega Millions. Let me see if that works. Oop, that's not it. Nam. Um, yeah, still not coming up. But the, the point of the article uh, or the blog was that um, Nam has like a, a an X factor tier that you can be a member of. And if you're a member of this um, X Factor tier, then uh, you get like, I guess, unlimited funding and a, you know, a bunch of stuff uh, from NAM and uh, just special perks. I don't, I don't know exactly what they all are, but um, <clears throat> they're looking for someone who's charismatic. It wasn't like biblical requirements, but they're looking for pastors who are charismatic, right? So, um, and, and if, yeah, I, I don't, I wonder whether or not that played into this. I, I, I'm sure there will be some answers coming on some of this, but um, here's another one. Liar discovery shows pastor David Platt lied to McLean Bible church this is probably about the SBC stuff. I'm guessing. And then th and this is the one I saw David Platt's prosperity gospel. Platt buys $1.1 million home. 
So for those who don't know, David Platt recently, uh, Mike Kelsey was the guy who was saying he wanted to torch all white people. He is now, uh, I guess I think they call them teaching pastors. I think he's a teaching pastor. And David Platt is not um, he, he, not as influential, I guess. His role is, is I don't know how you'd even say it, somewhat diminished. Is that accurate? He's, he, he's, I don't think he's a teaching pastor. He's still a pastor. Maybe he is, but, but if, if he is now there's another teaching pastor either way. Um, it, there must've been something related to that because the parsonage he was living in owned by the church, he, he purchased that, but it's a $1.1 million house. Now, of course, you know, that Northern Virginia, it's kind of expensive, but I, and I have no problem with the pastor doing that at all. It's just that David Platt's whole shtick is that you should go live in poverty and it's terrible that you're, you're, you know, you're not in the ghetto. You're not in a foreign country. You're what are we doing? But yet he pastors one of the most affluent, rich, uh, suburban churches in the DC at Metro area. So, um, but yes, there's, uh, records now, public records showing that he has purchased this $1.1 million home. So anyway, um, this kind of stuff is happening. So Capstone reports one of the places that some of that stuff, I know, I think ADs covered some of this stuff. Um, but the real David Platt.com, I think is where you're going to find the most information on this. If, uh, that's something you're interested in, um, a few other things, uh, and I will get to your comments, uh, in a moment, but a few other things here, uh, that I wanted to talk about, uh, perhaps briefly, uh, Lecrae the Christian uh, hip hop artist has basically, I'm not going to play it for you, but basically he's come out and he is uh, supporting, endorsing on some level, same sex attraction. It's not a sin compares it to gluttony and we ignore gluttony, but we're, you know, Christians are so judgmental of homosexuals. And uh, so Lecrae further uh, falling further and further and further away from his Christian moorings, and it's because of the social justice stuff, and it shouldn't be a surprise. Also, the Catholic Church, uh, some of you probably already know this, but the Pope approves blessings for same-sex couples that must not resemble marriage, according to the Associated Press. Pope Francis formally approved letting Catholic priests bless same-sex couples. The Vatican announced Monday a radical shift in policy that aimed at making the church more inclusive while maintaining its strict ban on gay marriage. So, that, I mean, this is like, it's like, it's like what church, major church, isn't doing this kind of stuff. I mean, it, it's just so sad. Um, it's just incremental steps. It's the frog boiling. Uh, and, and and I just, I point these things out for the people who are Protestants that are just so attracted to Catholicism. And they, they think that there's some real tradition there that they can sink their teeth into. And look, Catholicism, you know, has a problem with this because in Protestantism, uh, you don't have the same hierarchical uh, uh, bent, uh, especially in independent churches. But even in, you know, Anglican or Presbyterian churches, you you don't have it. They don't have the control of the pope. Maybe you could say the Archbishop of Canterbury, so, sort of. But but that's the Church of England. So he doesn't even have uh, the same kind of authority over like the, the Anglican Church of North America, for example, or the Episcopal Church. So anyway. I uh, figured I'd, I'd let people know just, hey, if, if you're going to convert to Catholicism because you think they're like more pro more pro life or, you know, something the smells and the bells, you know, consider this kind of stuff. I mean, it, it's no improvement. It, it, it's probably from the frying pan to the, the fryer there. Here's another story um, I just figured I'd share with you. Thomas Booher on Twitter, uh, now X, posted a bunch of screenshots and I looked over some of these from the PCA, the Presbyterian Church in America's magazine called By Faith. And it's celebrating 50 years of the PCA. And he points out, and he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, he's got 20 screenshots here, 21, 21 screenshots of just kind of woke stuff <laughs> coming from the PCA in, in their articles. This is their 50th anniversary edition. Even the headline, Lloyd Kim becomes first Korean American to in senior PC leadership, because, you know, that's very significant. Um, <clears throat> talks about uh, uh, Dr. Erwin, um, I, I don't know if I can pronounce his name, is it Ince or Ince? But uh, he was the first African-American elected to the position of moderator in the PCA. And um, you have a quote here from, is that Kevin Smith? I don't know who that is. Someone named Kevin Smith. Yeah. 
To see an African-American teaching as moderator is one of the great moments of our denomination. This whole article about this. Um, and, and, and it's not the end. I mean, there's so much of stuff. Uh, Ale Alexander Yoon, and, and, and I mean, he's, we talked about him before, he's woke. Um, there's a whole like tribute here to Tim Keller uh, in there in the PCA thing. So anyway, all that to say, I mean, I, and it just keeps going, man, I'm not going to go over all this, but um, for those who have told me, cause some people have told me, Hey, no, it's gotten better in the PCA and maybe it has, I don't know, but this is your official magazine. So um, I'm just saying the, there, there's a problem and it's not just on the revoice stuff. There's clearly a problem with the race stuff too, the CRT type stuff. Um, well, I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this because I want to end on a high note here uh, for everyone. Let's uh, let's talk more about the Platt stuff, though, because I'm sure people are weighing in. Um, Northern Virginia residents here, Tyson Corners slash Vienna area where NBC is located, has some of the highest priced housing in the country. Just some context. Yeah. And, and I admit that I, I just said that, that it was expensive. But this is coming from the guy again who. Uh, and which I, and I think 1.1 million dollars that's probably above the average. I mean, does he really need that, right? And you, you might think that's not fair. Why, why would you say that? I have no problem with a pastor doing that, but again, this is the guy who wants you to sell everything. If, if he wants you to sell everything and live with the poor, and so, why is he why is he buying a 1.1 million dollar house? It, it doesn't make sense. Um, so th it's that's a I think a minor point, such a minor point in the grand scheme of all this, but. I think it, it it's like there's so many little things like that that uh, you know. Anyway, it, it's worth it's worth mentioning. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then and Joel Saint just confirmed that. Yeah, I listened to one of Platt's sermons when he was a pastor in Birmingham, Alabama. He was all about living simply, not having so much stuff. And I, and I will say there was a guy I remember this is in 2011. I was at Master Seminary, and um, at that particular seminary, there was a student, an incoming student who came from Platt's church. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. It was in Huntsville, Alabama, I think, wasn't it? Um, Brooks, was it uh, Brooks something? Someone put it in the chat. <laughs> I, I don't remember, but anyway. Um, he told me that all, all the stuff that's coming out now, he told me then, he said, oh, Platt's a hypocrite. He doesn't live the way he says. He doesn't, he, he doesn't even, he looks down at his congregation. He won't even meet with his congregation. He doesn't do the pastoral things. He doesn't disciple. He's not a, he doesn't have a heart of a pastor. And I thought, well, that's, I mean, it's just a disgruntled member. I mean, you know, everyone's met disgruntled members. Now I'm looking back and I'm thinking, hmm, I, I think it was Brooke Hills, if I'm not mistaken, might, might've been the name of his church. Um, <clears throat> I love you, John, but why are you using Bing? Yeah, I don't know. That was the default on that. I, I have multiple, um, uh, uh, browsers, and that's not the one I usually use. Usually, I use actually DuckDuckGo. That's my default on the browser I use most of the time. So, yeah, should I not be using Bing though? I mean, Bing's Microsoft, I know, but like, what, what, what do people use out there? Uh, I mean, even DuckDuckGo isn't that great. So, I, I don't, I, I don't even know what to use. Maybe someone put in the chat what they use. Uh, someone asked, did anyone else's comment get deleted by John? I posted a disagreement with his opinion, and now I don't see my comment. Well, um. I never deleted your comment. I never saw your comment. So sorry. <laughs> Kings love you to death is the name of the, I don't know. No clue about that. Uh, I don't even have the capability. Uh, I don't think unless I went into YouTube directly to actually delete a comment. So I haven't deleted anything. Um, so so uh, feel free to post your disagreement again. I don't know why it was deleted. Uh, I will say this. YouTube will sometimes flag things that are inappropriate. So. I have a brother that goes to his church, uh, Zach James Music says, and I've always struggled on how to bring up this topic. Well, hopefully this documentary will help if you have a brother who goes to David Platt's church. Uh, someone else says, John, thanks for showing this. I left McLean Bible Church over Platt social justice teaching. You're not alone. A lot of people did that. Uh, it, I remember uh, back in 20, 2020, 2021, early 20. I, I remember I talked to a guy. He was interviewed, uh, Christopher Harris. He was interviewed for enemies within the church. And he, and I asked him, I said, where do, where do you attend church? Uh, we were at like a dinner thing. And he goes, oh, I go to McLean. And I was like, you go to McLean? I mean, you're in this documentary against social justice. Don't you think Platt's kind of, and he's like, well, and I don't think he goes there anymore. I think uh, he, he didn't know all like the insides and outsides of it. But um, it, it, like, it, it made me realize something I didn't know before that McLean Bible Church before Platt 
was the place to go. Like if you're an evangelical, you went to McLean. It was, it, it had, uh, it, throughout the whole community, they had a good reputation for their, um, is that at least what, what, uh, people uh, from there have told me they had a good reputation uh, for some of their ministries that they did. Uh, I guess there were their radio spots. People just knew who Lon Solomon was. And uh, the church has now pretty much been run into the ground. So, um, all right. Well, any final comments? And then uh, I'll give you some good news and I'll wish you a Merry Christmas. Someone says it's the Presbyterian Church of America, not in America. I thought it was in America. There's, I, I, know, I know there's differences in the Presbyterian's I know they, they, uh, Brook Hills. It was Brook Hills. Okay, good. Um, so, all right. Well, I think we're going to land the plane here. Let me give you some, uh, let, let me, let me give you some, um, good news. If I can pull it up. I think we have the technology. So good news. Obviously good news is that this stuff is being exposed. When evil is exposed, that's good news. But um, I wanted to give you this headline. Virginia teacher fired for not using students' preferred pronouns scores victory in court. Over the past week, Virginia Supreme Court reinstated core parts of the lawsuit filed by Peter Vlaming. Vlaming, a former French teacher, sued West Point High School's uh, school board and administration for firing him in 2018. A judge dismissed the lawsuit before they could hear any evidence in the case. However, the Virginia Supreme Court overturned that ruling and said the lawsuit should proceed to trial. Flaming's lawsuit claims that he tried to accomplish, uh, accommodate a transgender student in his class by using his masculine name. He said that he avoided the use of pronouns. However, the student, his parents, and the school told him to use the student's male pronouns. However, Flaming claims he could not use the student's preferred pronouns due to his sincerely held religious and philosophical beliefs. Flaming claims that he believed that each person has a biologically fixed sex, and no one can change it. Consequently, the court said the lawsuit involved in the First Amendment guarantee of the free exercise of religion. Hence, the Supreme Court overruled the lower court that threw it out and said the case should proceed. Flaming's lawsuit alleged that the school violated his constitutional right to speak freely and exercise his religion. However, the school board argued that he violated the anti-discrimination policy. Hence, all seven justices of the state Supreme Court agreed that two of Flaming's claims should move forward to trial. They upheld his claim that the school violated his right to exercise his religion under the Virginia Constitution freely. Also, they reinstated his breach of contract claim against the school. This is great. This is great. And we're not used to winning these things. I mean, the, the aggression has all been against Christians. Um, and I just want to let you, you know, it, it, it's there are some positive things happening out there. So there you go. Um, well, that's it for today. Uh, like I said, go to therealdavidplatt.com, share the video around, and tomorrow is Christmas Eve, the day before Christmas, and it's also the Lord's Day. So go to church, uh, enjoy it. I hope you have a great time with your family or friends, whoever you're getting together with. And if you're not getting together with, I hope uh, maybe at church tomorrow, uh, you can connect with someone that you can get together with uh, for Christmas. I'm going to be running around everywhere. That's the consequence of you know when you have a uh, family an hour apart. You're you're close enough for both, but uh, you, it, it means you do a lot of driving and stuff. So that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. But uh, I am I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. God bless. More coming, and uh, Lord willing, we'll have at least one, hopefully one or two, but at least one more episode. I'm I'm planning on having before the end of the year. So uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs>